Jeff, how's it going? Good, Jerry. How you doing, man? Man, doing good. Good. Did you have a good weekend? I did. We I mean, had a lot of rain here in Middle Tennessee, and <laughs> we did. It was devastating in parts of Tennessee, and we really hate yeah. to see that and hear that. And uh, but uh, yeah, for those of y'all who who don't know, we're in Dixon. We're we're sitting right now in in the city of Dixon, Tennessee, which is just right down the road from uh, McEwen and Waverly, Tennessee, which was just devastated by flood, yeah. the likes of which we have never seen. Right. It yeah. seems, you know, that the death toll is still climbing, and it's just a very sad and pitiful situation, and, you know, our hearts and our prayers and thoughts go out to everyone in those locations, and, uh, uh, you know, really, words can't describe, you know, what's going on. And, 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 I, and, and I tell you, I, it, it proves that you really need to, to um, you need to cherish every day. Yes. Because that flood happened so fast. This was just a regular day. And all of a sudden, people's houses are are washed away, and a yeah. lot of people died. Yeah, it started in the night, you know, Friday night, and it kept, you know, going, progressing throughout the day on Saturday, and uh, even at home, you know, I mean, we, our creeks rose, you know, and we had some local flooding and stuff, but you know, no lawful li uh, loss of life, yeah. uh, no really structural damage that I know of, a few trees down, a few fences gone. Uh, but other than that, you know, nothing right here we're at. But, you know, 15, 20 miles down the road, you know, right now, last I heard, you know, the death toll was 21. And yeah. still several missing well, people missing. that they haven't found. Um, yeah. Uh, my family farm, luckily my house uh, sits up on a hill. We all live on a hill. Yeah. Right? But, but that my house sits above our old family farm and, and my dad and his brothers who still put a lot of work into a good right. size garden, that stuff's all washed right. away. But that's, you know, that's nothing compared to people who really just got, right. you know, so, yeah. Anyway, that's that's what's going on but here. But other than that, had a, had a good weekend, you know, it's yeah. other than that. Yeah, good, good, yeah. I was in Gatlinburg, I did a lot of work in Gatlinburg. Had a good time up there, did a lot of, I was a, a recording, um, there was a, a songwriters festival there right. this weekend, so I was up there recording video and, and taking a lot of photos for that, so that was a lot of fun. Okay. So yeah, so I, I, you know, I was up there, going like, everything was going great, and I look on the, you know, the phone to see what's happening around here, and I was like, man, that's, you know, it's crazy because the weather there was so nice. Yeah. yeah so. Well, anyway. It was, it was only like a strip, you know, like 80 to 100 miles wide, it came out of Kentucky, you know, it came straight down through Middle Tennessee and just kept hammering the same area yeah. over and over and over. Because yeah. it was, gosh, I guess it was 9 or 10 o'clock at our house Saturday night, and it started probably around 11, 30, 12 on Friday night. So almost probably 22, 23 hours straight, you know, just nonstop rain for the most part. Yeah, that's crazy. So hug your babies tight at night. Yeah. All right, well, what's going on up in Nashville? Well, still a lot of work going on. Uh, you know, we're still chugging along. We've, we've had a good backlog for several months now, and uh, we're starting to get caught up on some of the stuff. You know, we had a little bit of issues, you know, as far as not having enough manpower for the work we had, but, you know, we was able to overcome that. And uh, just the good people that work for us and we work with, and, and we was able to shift people around from job to job and keep it all going with the personnel we had. So mm. we did hire a few, you know, two or three uh, extra hands and, and which helped out and helped us get caught up. And right now we still got plenty of work for all them guys and, and uh, you know, the future looks good. Uh, you know, we've had some issues the last few weeks in which I'm sure all of you contractors out there are going through the same thing. We're having trouble getting materials on site, uh, which another conversation for another time which I think is all political but uh, you know I don't know what the real cause of it is but we can't get products mm -hmm. you know they, they keep you know saying it goes back to COVID and which I don't think it goes back to COVID I think it goes back to our government just handing people money to they make more money stay at home they can't go to a job and uh, I think that's the biggest issue well, right now. Well, yeah, it, I mean, it, it all comes down to supply chain disruptions. Right. And as we all know, um, 
the employment market is ridiculous because there are more jobs available than there are people on unemployment. Right. And all all of that all all of that kind of stuff causes slowdown in the time that it takes to get stuff made and supplies made and distributed and all that. So Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, all right. How's the how's the are you, are you are you bidding a lot of jobs? Well, yes and no. I mean, we're bidding a lot of work. We get a lot of bidding advice, but it seems like here lately, the last month, month and a half, uh, the most stuff we've been getting right now is design bill type stuff and budget stuff, which it's all good, you know, but you know, you, you, you take a project and you bid it four or five times, you know, through a stage and you're looking at maybe a month and a half worth of work, two months worth of work. And then you're looking at another two months before it starts. So mm -hmm. if you go through those phases, you know, you're looking at realistically like four to six months before you may even start this project, maybe longer. So we kind of got in that groove uh, of doing that thing the last month, month and a half. And now, like I said, we're starting to get caught up with some of our other work. So it's kind of got me in a little bit of a, not really a bind, but I need some, some good hard bid jobs to come through that I can bid to it's going to start in the next, you know, 30 to 90 days to where, you know, we've got work to carry our guys on through the winter time. Like bigger jobs? Well, theoretically, yes, I like to have the bigger jobs, but I'm good with some smaller jobs as well, uh, just because it helps fill the gaps. You know, a lot of times these okay. bigger jobs, you get a bunch of those on the books. One comes to a close, and then it may be a 30, 40, 60 day gap, you know, before the next one starts. So I've got to have something for that crew to do, you know, for those days. Right. Okay. So a lot of these smaller jobs, you know, you can kind of push them back, push them back, and kind of make them fit in your wheelhouse to where, okay. you know, it works out to where you finish one job, you can move into a smaller job that lasts a couple months, two or three months, and then you've got that crew busy, they're working, then all of a sudden here comes this bigger job, it's available now, they can finish that when you roll right over into the bigger project. So having some smaller jobs on the books gives you some flexibility to, like say, fill in the cracks. Right. And when you need... Some work for those guys to go yeah. do to keep. Okay. Well, yeah. our, our, and, and that's one thing you know. I too, I would like to iterate to all of our all of our customers, our followers. You know, anyone that watches our videos. Uh, every job is important. Every job you know has the potential to help you get to a certain stage or a certain point in your productivity throughout the year. You know, those smaller jobs. You can generally make good money on those. I mean, a lot of times you make more money on those than you can on the bigger jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not be as nearly as big as monetary value, but you may increase your profitability right. by 5, 10, 15 percent right. by doing those smaller jobs. Mm -hmm. But it keeps you from having to shift crews or people around in those down times. When you have a smaller job, you can just send them over here and you know, let them get that job done, get it knocked out, and then maybe one of these bigger jobs are ready to go. Right, okay, well, so right now, then you're looking for some jobs to bid. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that work? How, what are you doing to actively look for stuff to bid? We still have bid invites, you know, come across email uh, every day. Uh, excuse me, like I said, you know, here lately it's been some of the more budget type stuff, mm -hmm. design build type stuff. Uh, but when they don't come across, you've got to figure out a way to find them. So you've got to reach back, you know, to customers in the past that you've, you know, done work of this nature with. You reach out to them and say, hey guys, you got anything coming in the near future? Make phone calls, send emails. You know, hey, in the next two to three months, you know, I'm going to have a crew that's going to be available for a month and a half, two months, and uh, I need someone from the go. So if you've got something, mm -hmm. I'd be interested in bidding on it. Yeah. You know, do a little PR work, do a little research. Uh, you know, and and that's one thing, you know, also I like to tell our, our people out there that are watching, for, for you guys that are experienced and, and have work for larger companies and stuff, you already know this, but when you have a crew, multiple crews of men that work for you, it's not only your livelihood you got to look out for, you got to look out for their livelihood. Right. And so I see it more often than not, you know, some of these smaller contractors, they get in a situation where, you know, they've got six, eight, nine months worth of work. And then all of a sudden it kind of dries up, mm -hmm. and then they have to lay those guys off. Uh -huh. Well, right now in our line of work, those guys are hard to find. So there's people standing in line and waiting on them. Right. So, so the last thing you want to do is lay them is off. Lay your guys off. Yeah, because you know they're not going to be that easy to get back. Right. If you do get them back, you probably want to pay a hefty penny to get them back on your payroll. Right. 
but that's why you as a project manager, or you as an owner, you've got to really be focused on what work you have and what work's coming up in the future because you need to look at your backlog, to look at your current schedule, and look at when these jobs are going to be finishing up. So you've got to be able to bid work that's going to start in a reasonable amount of time when these other jobs are finishing up. Right. You know, you've got to be able to make sure that you've got work for your crews to go to because the last thing you want is to lay them off and you dang sure don't want to have to keep them on payroll, cleaning up your yard, working around the shop, doing stuff of that nature, right. you know, because they got to charge their time somewhere. So they're going to charge you the active jobs, which is going to bring down profitability, which is going to hurt you in the long run. Okay, so are there times like that when you are much more willing to accept uh, lower margins, or do you stick to your guns as far as the I margins stick, you need to make on the job? I stick to my guns until it's a have-to situation, okay. and then I will lower my margins because I'd rather have a job that has a minimum profitability and keep my guys busy, mm -hmm. as I had to have to lay those guys off or have to pay them out of pocket to... Well, when when do you, when you know when do you come to that line? Is it is it when you have guys and sitting around nothing to do at that point? Are you like okay, I just need to get some work just to keep some guys employed? Or well, usually ever... within within a month, one to two months of run out of work, mm -hmm. I'll get aggressive on my bids. Okay. You know, you know, uh, to try to lower my margins, to try to pick up work. Okay. To make sure I got something that's going to start in the near future to, to keep those guys busy, okay. to where I'm not just forking money out out of pocket to right. to keep them on board. Right. Some I guess sometimes you've got to do what you got to do to, to keep some cash flow coming. Yeah. Keep, keep this. And and when you're doing that, you definitely want to look at your smaller projects, because you don't want to get into a project where you're going to be working six, eight, nine months on right. for cash flow. Right. You wouldn't want to take a big job at a low margin no. that's going to really strap you down for yeah. a long period. Right. Right. So you know you gotta you know you gotta think about how your it all boils down to how your business is structured, as far as the profitability you have to have, as far as the manpower you have to have, the cash flow that you have on hand, the cash flow you got to get in the near future. You know you've got to figure out you know what that's going to do. You know a lot of people work off a line of credit when they have to. You know how far that line of credit take you. You know these are a lot of things you got to be thinking about when you're getting short on work. Right. So you know if you're one to two months out. Of running out of work and you don't have any work lined up, you know those those are the type of decisions you got to make and got to make in a hurry. Gotcha. That's good advice, Jeff. Yeah, you too, appreciate sir. you. Good to talk to you, man. All right, we'll see y'all. Uh, check us out at uh, profitdig.com. If you like this, please like. Leave us a comment if there's something you want to hear us talk about. This is this man here is a true expert. I learned something from learn something from him every day. So. All right. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right. See, See you all. all.